Hello again, we are back at the Digital Lounge and it's my pleasure to talk to Cornelia Schaurecke today. She's an AI expert and she has generated revenue and uh, gained uh, cost savings in the hundreds of millions of euros. So Cornelia, you have to let us know, how did you do it? <laughs> well, thank you so much for, for having me here. And um, it's, um, it's not easy, but it's doable. And it really all depends on a couple of factors. So I think um, you could look at it from a technology perspective, but um, truly I believe uh, once you come from the business perspective, you really have to understand the business and see on the one hand side, do you have a revenue uplift potential or do you have a cost saving potential? Do you have quality issues you'd like to prevent? So what is the killer use case? What are the best use cases? What are the most high value use cases that you would like to solve for your business? And then decide what's the right use case portfolio you would like to, to build. Maybe starting with one, um, trying out, uh, do you have the data? Do you have the right in-house expertise? Do you need partners to work with? Can you, can you build a prototype fast? Um, what are the results? Measure, measure, measure. And then really, if it works, go and, and make it big. Uh, normally, if you have the data and the models and the right expertise, um, and you see a business value, then so much, many more questions are coming. Uh, so, you know, follow those business questions and try to help the business in really solving their problems or helping them grow. Mm -hmm. And um, of course, underneath you need a whole um, load of capabilities like technology, the cloud, um, AI, um, automation, you know, the data, obviously, which I've already mentioned, you need a, a all the privacy topics to be looked after, security topics, everything. But in a nutshell, if you just ask me for one thing, then really it's what is the business problem? What is the business opportunity you would like to support with AI? And if the business is a huge business, like in our case, it's not just one use case. We're talking about hundreds of use cases, but also here the topic is what are the right use cases? Which portfolio would you pick? Mm -hmm. uh, what are use cases that are maybe just um, burning your experts time uh, versus what are the big ones that you should really focus on and, and then scale them. I'm coming from large multinational com companies in the telco and in the automotive industry. So it's all about scaling the value that you can achieve with data and AI. Mm -hmm. So that's fascinating. I liked how in your keynote you were mentioning that you have to sort of kill some of your projects, right? As you were mentioning, uh, talent in the sector is scarce. So what's the role of the people when we talk about uh, scaling AI? It's all about the people. Look, it's all about having or building the best possible team with the best possible diverse experts. And um, I'm personally a big, a big fan and believer of having the most important players in-house. And then of course, partner with the best experts that you can find in the market. Um, Personally, both in the telco industry and also in the car industry, I have um, really built teams from scratch, from, from zero, uh, or taken teams to the next level from, from good to great in terms of capabilities. And, you know, AI is changing so fast. Once you think you've built the capability, the technology is evolving so fast, so you really need to make sure you understand the business problems, but also understand the technical opportunities and you understand your data and bring it all together and then leverage it as fast as possible for your company, for your organization. And um, yes, um, sometimes less is more. <laughs> as um, as um, I've mentioned in the keynote, sometimes you have to focus on a couple of big bets and really make sure you nail it and you really make sure you deliver the business benefit and don't do too many things at the same time. Uh, we call it don't boil the ocean or, you know, <laughs> don't do too much tree hugging, but really focus on one, two, three questions, really answer them, show the potential, bring the benefits, and then you can do the next use case. Mm -hmm. But don't do a hundred things at the same time. And I think that the latest trend in AI of one of them is not just generative AI, but, you know, with generative AI, um, so many use cases are mushrooming and yes. I think the big art is how to pick the, the right ones and kill the wrong ones or pack them for a later stage. Yeah. Any tips on how to, you know, go through all these mushrooms that are 
that are sporting? Well, you know, if you're a small company, then it's probably easy and you can uh, have a look at your initiatives and, and do that with Excel, PowerPoint or ask your experts. But in our case, with hundreds of data scientists um, in, in my previous roles, um, you really have to be more methodolo methodological. You have to. So what we built uh, was we built a use case library. Mm -hmm. um, we built a code repository so you could reutilize the, your assets uh, again and again. So to prevent teams from inventing the wheel over and over again. And um, the latest opportunity on the market is really uh, there are a couple of um, AI portfolio management tools available. Mm -hmm. So you don't need to do it on, on Excel or PowerPoint. You can really do it in a tool um, and you have everything at hand. You know all your initiatives, you know which data they are using. You have the um, legal ethical topics also uh, wrapped mm -hmm. uh, because that is a very big concern or topic with the upcoming uh, legislation. Yes. And um, in a nutshell, you pick the most promising use cases and you can focus and channel your investments on doing the right things mm -hmm. at the right time and then move on and pick the next one. <laughs> like in Agile, you know, yes, yes. you just then pick the next one, but don't do everything at once. Yeah. And what I also find was very inspiring was when you shared that you built up uh, a team around responsible or ethical AI as well, right? Mm -hmm. Because that's a topic that's now bubbling up as well. Uh, with a lot of scandals that were happening in, in some larger companies. Maybe you give us a short glimpse into, into mm -hmm. that and why it's so important in your eyes as well. Well, in my previous role in the telecommunication uh, industry, we have uh, 300 million end customers and uh, it is very important to do the right things uh, in terms of the, the algorithms that you're building. So uh, we've always had a responsible AI framework, but what we've done recently in the last two years is take that framework to the next level. Uh, we've built an AI policy with ethical AI, responsible AI, and how to really bring it into the company, into the processes, um, and um, do that in a way that it's doable, okay? Uh, to get us ready for the uh, upcoming legislation. Amazing. And yes, you have a vast background in quite large organizations, but now you're venturing out on your own being an executive advisor to large corporations, mm -hmm. but also startups and scale-ups. So mm -hmm. what's keeping you busy right now? What are you excited about? I'm very excited about a couple of things. A, in my last uh, 23 years in big corporations, I've, uh, I've always worked in innovative topics. So I'm very fascinated by uh, the data and AI opportunities, but also other opportunities where we have uh, worked on in the quantum area. So this is keeping me busy on the, <laughs> Uh, on the uh, startup and scale-up side and on the large corporation side I'm very happy and proud to, to be advising some fantastic companies uh, where we can really leverage their uh, capabilities at scale mm -hmm. and really bring impact to their businesses. It sounds very exciting. Look, so many use cases are transferable. You've done them for, let's say, telco, or you've done them for the car industry, but so many of those use cases are all about connected customers or about connected vehicles or mobility or IoT. So lots of use cases do scale from, let's say, telco to insurance to banking, um, to give you one example or different examples with industry examples like anomaly detection or quality optimization, which really applies not just to the car industry, but to so many other pro producing industries. So I'm a big fan and believer of those uh, transferable AI use cases that can be transferred from, from big comp companies to smaller companies. They should all leverage the opportunities that AI and data is presenting for them. And I would love to see more of that even growing in, in the Dach region. I've seen so much in the UK, but also across, also across Europe and America, where we've worked historically. But I do believe here in the Dach region, there is a potential to, to um, do even more. Mm -hmm. And yes. So is that your wish for when you will return, hopefully for the Digital Lounge 2027? What will you and I be talking about? Hopefully in the Digital Hub, but also here it's quite nice. <laughs> today was a great uh, morning session with lots of fascinating companies and we've heard everything from telco to defense to big uh, producing manufacturing industries. Uh, when I'm coming back here, I would love to see even more industries working on, working on uh, 
delivering the um, benefits out of AI and data. We've had a couple of examples. We've heard about healthcare, we've heard about banking, insurance and others who can do more by leveraging simply what others have done already or what has been proven in other industries or other, uh, you know, comparable sectors. Mm -hmm. So much more one can do and I think it's very important for Europe to, to not leave these innovative topics to the others yes. who are also investing heavily. Thank you so much, Cornelia. It was a pleasure to chat with you today. Likewise. Thank you so much, Isabel. And looking forward to the next one next yes. year. <laughs>